Yo, status and double back in the building for another talk, talk over, over podcast. podcast. What's happening? What's happening, my dude? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my bro. How was it? What point? Uh, yeah, oh, mate, it was sick. Absolutely sick. I went to Cyprus, man. Yeah, yeah, you, and, got, uh, you, was, yeah. you was living like a king, my G. I seen your You story. know what's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> the, vlog, the vlog was fun to make, man. But you know what's mad about Cyprus, right? I don't know if you know this, but they do the countdown... Um, they don't do the countdown in the club. The club didn't open till 1 a.m., which was that's proper a, mad a, for that's me. That's a bit weird. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the way they do it is everyone does the countdown. They spend their time with their family or their friends or whatever. So they might be in a restaurant. They might be just chilling at home. Okay. They might be in a bar. But the clubs don't open um, until 1 a.m. That's actually so, pretty sick, to be fair. Like, Well, depending on what kind of vibe you're going for, but being able to spend time with the fam and then the night kind of starts after that. Like, that's Bro, di- I would that's love di- that's that different, that man. Yeah, I got I'd be- love to do it here. I think I think the countdown is overhyped anyway, man. So this year, for where I played, it was like you try and gas it up towards the countdown, innit? You want people like lively, but you don't want to like go in too hard with the music because it's only twelve o'clock. So it's like you're trying to get the balance of getting people gassed, but not like burning your night out. So this year, for me, yeah. it was like I don't know, man. It's like they weren't ready for the countdown when the countdown happened. So yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So I've, no, I feel that. like I've I've always felt that way about DJing in the UK on New Year's Eve. You have to like that, especially eleven till twelve. You've got to really make sure that that's like everyone's on point. Everyone's having it's, the, exactly, the best time, and exactly. all the bangers are out. But yeah. then by twelve o'clock, it's only twelve o'clock. Exactly, like you might man. <laughs> when you four you're hours to, left, <laughs> when you're do trying you know to do I mean? a five hour set as well, it's like right. Okay, yeah. so the first hour, man's got to go in. And then for the next four hours, like I got a ho- like you've got to hold it, you've got to hold yeah, it more than ever when it comes to New Year's hard. Eve. Flipping hard work it. on New Year, but yeah, Go for on. me it was it was it was real easy in Cyprus. I'm not gonna lie, like it was just it was just a dope vibe, man. I played at a club in Nicosia called uh, Club Tees. Sick. So shout out to Milto, he's the boss. Big ups to DJ Blend and uh, DJ Adriano as well. Adriano. They, um, yeah, they they held it down nicely, bro. Decent, good warm ups as well. That was like really important they did like half an hour sets each so they kept alternating Sick. but they didn't burn any of the big tunes like they just the hosting was on point like they're very good djs man so is that the first time you played sh- abroad on new year's eve because i've i've never done a dj set abroad on new year ever no no i've never dead, never dj'd but... abroad on new year before so that was definitely a first there you go one for the and, bucket um, list my dude it was amazing, man. I'm not going to lie. It was amazing. Especially as my original New Year's Eve booking f- fell through. So I just thought I was going to be doing nothing on New Year. And then, um, <laughs> because big up DJ Volatile, he came through as the plug and uh, sorted me out with Cyprus, man. So, yeah, I bet, I bet, I bet yeah. Mrs. Double was thinking, yeah, this man's going to have the night off this year. And year. <laughs> no, she's, Spend some time with the family with and her. that. <laughs> she, she did stuff with her sister and her family, man. So yeah, she was, she was good. She's a party girl anyway, so. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this week, um, it's a conversation that we've been wanting to talk about for a minute, to be fair. like I think, I think we've touched on it over the phone a couple of times and just really wanted to touch on like record pools, man. DJ City, Crate Connect, like late night record pool. There's like, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Digiwax. I, Digi, Digi, Digi Digiwax. Digiwax. Yeah, Digiwax. Digiwax is hard, Wow. <laughs> nah, that's, that's a good one to... You know what? Digiwax is a good place to get clean albums. Okay. Digiwax is that annoying? That, that's that annoying pool that sends about five hundred emails a week. Basically, one thing that I wanted to touch on, really, like it's not even saying it's a negative, but I just yeah. feel like a lot of the DJ sets that I'd be hearing, especially in the last like two three years, as these as these record pools have got more and more popular, I just feel mm. like it's made the DJ's life like a lot easier when it comes to like collecting music like not saying that's um, a, a negative but one thing it has done um, has made a lot of these DJs like a bit lazy if you know oh, what I'm saying oh 100% like it's, yeah, allow- yeah, yeah, it's 100%. allowing these guys like not they don't have to like really dig as much like if it was to, if it was to go back to when we first started playing obviously it was pre-digital format um, so there was no record pools like there was you couldn't get mp3s or anything you literally had to go out and dig and source your yeah. music so if you was to like find like you could find a little white label there in your local record store 
that only like a couple hundred copies have been put out there and you've got one yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know that no other DJs have got their hands on that record. So then that would be like, I mean, that would be like special. That'd be like a special part of your set that you know next man is not going to be playing that record if you know what I'm saying and that's the thing if that was if that tune was a banger as well people could only hit like there might only be a couple copies in your town exactly that song exactly if you get one of them the only place people can hear that song is at your DJ set exactly that man bro it's you know you know what it's mad actually because back in those times when you had to pick your music like so I used to go into the record shop and literally spend the day there listening Them through ones. all the new releases and listening and I would only pick and buy the ones that I liked. So my record collection is only songs that I like. That's it. Okay. Because having to spend your own money on it, <laughs> it's why com- would I buy Completely music? different like, ball game, innit? <laughs> when you when bro, you're spending eight pounds on a single like. vinyl. That shit was that's expensive. It. That's it, man. I'm spending like I'm dropping like three hundred pound every time I go to the record store. So why would I buy a song that I don't like with my money? And so in turn that reflects in your club sets. All the new songs that I've just bought, I'm now playing in the club. And one particular record, which I, I actually was lucky enough to get on super, super early, was Akon Locked Up. Okay. And I, re- I remember, right, this was before it was getting played on radio. I think, I remember it was like 18 months before it got released as a single. 18 months, bro, I was playing it before it got released, right? And I got it from the record store and I used to play it. I was just a warm-up DJ in Brighton at this point, but I played it religiously. And then when it got released and blew up, everyone in Brighton used to come to me and be like, yo, this is the song you've been playing for AJ, like forever. Oh, blah, 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 bro, see, I mean? though, them times, man. So it's, it's not like, I'm not saying I made the record blow up. Obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. it was going to. But for my town, for my audience, whenever anyone hears Akon Locked Up from that era, they will think of me as the DJ that, that they heard it heard play it first. Does that makes sense. Yeah, that's hundred so percent. No, no other DJs really were playing it around the time that I was playing it. So that's what set me aside from other people. And I think you're right. Like these days, where music is so accessible, and especially in terms of the record pools being just a certain collection of music, it means lazy DJs that don't want to go and search other places just get that day's worth of music, and that's what they play. I think that's one part of the culture that's missing as well, you know, when it comes, like, that was part of what I enjoyed when I came through as a DJ was going out, sourcing records, spending the day in the record stores, researching. I had a link at Fat City Records, which was, like, a huge record shop in in the city centre. It's, like, eventually, like, they they, they went bust and had to close, man, like, in Mm -hmm. that era when vinyl, like, completely died off. I I used to go there every Monday... And they just used to have a stack of the stuff that they knew that I was into that they would just put to the side because they knew yeah, every yeah, Monday yeah. I was coming in to rinse through and normally leave with like a handful of records. So I feel like a part, a part of what really made me fall in love with it to start off with, that's kind of like completely gone now. And it's just like the DJs don't really have to do the hard work. Do you know what I mean? Like no, any, anyone can go and subscribe now to say like, a DJ City, a late uh, late night record pull or whatever, and just have instant access to a catalog of the bangers. So it's like, obviously not all DJs are, are, are moving like that, but I'm just saying from going off what I've heard and when I've been around, it's kind of monopolized a lot of these DJ sets to where they're all playing the same edits, the same kind of stuff. And like just yeah. been a bit lazy. If I'm there's not, if there's I'm so honest. much laziness about bro. And do you know what I actually like, I know we did the mashups podcast the other day, but this is one thing I was going to mention about it is what I think should happen is personally, I think the mashup DJs should pull back on who gets their mashups. And I think like, I think that's another way because I've throughout last year, I go into different scenarios. Even I was even in like a, it was, wasn't a DJ event, but they had a DJ, but it was like a, a food event, like a food festival type thing. And the guy was just playing bare mashups, like mixing them, but just playing a lot of mashups. Okay. And then mm. playing a lot of like transition mixes and all stuff that's just, everyone else was playing basically. Do you know what I mean? So it's like... <laughs> <sighs> I, I use know, I, I use about five different record pools, bro. Like, I use... I've I've got like two or three UK ones and I've got a, a handful of American ones and then 
throwing like our, my own like research and digging for artists and mix all that together it still allows you to be like creatively different with with how your sets are do you know what i mean like yeah. i do use a lot of dj city bits i do use a lot of like record pool edits intro edits remix edits but if i mix that in with a lot of the stuff that i dig out or things that i make myself like you say a lot of my refixes don't even see the light of day like i'll keep them in my own set so i'll send them out to like yeah a bunch of people so yeah it's i, I think it just depends how you approach how you approach the dj game in it like some people i've, I've we're quite lucky, bro, because we because we come from a different generation, so we know what it was like to move, like when in in the in the era before like MP3 and streaming and everything took over. Whereas this yeah. new, the new generation that's starting now, <clears throat> record pools and stuff is like that's just a standard thing, like that's. But all. you know what's you know what's mad though is it's even easier nowadays to find new music. Do you know how much of it there is out there? Oh yeah, like, bro. And this is, this, Spotify this is what and we that. said in one of <laughs> one of our 2018 roundup podcasts. I'm sure we just said like throughout 2019, every DJ should find at least one artist and bust them. Do you know what I mean? Like just just relentlessly play their music in your sets, in your mixes, and all of this stuff. I think that should be a thing. Like it sh really should be like. If you're not playing new music and if you're not taking risks with music that no one else has heard, then what are you really doing? You're Let's just see. a spot. You're just a human Spotify playlist. There's no excuses That's, now for finding that, new music, bro. Because any of these artists out there, like anybody, can release music now. It's not a case yeah. of all. No, you've got everybody, to get a not deal anybody, ev publishing this. Everybody but, can. Like literally, like we could bring, like me and you could do a song tomorrow and drop it on Spotify and and get bare streams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. <laughs> but anyway, it's not. It's not even a. Hate, it's not even a hating thing. Like it's just a general observation. Like I listen to a lot There's... of mixes. I listen to a lot of stuff on Mixcloud. Um, yeah. You know, keeping up with the competition in that, and then I find, <laughs> I find like ninety percent of the stuff that I listen to is, is the same, man. It's the same. So I think I think it's a higher percentage. A lot of the DJs, <laughs> man said ninety percent, you know, and the guy said a higher, what higher than ninety <laughs> percent? Bro, I say ninety-five percent, yeah, ninety-five percent of the extra stuff that I've heard. I, okay, let me switch it around. Only five percent of the DJs or DJ mixes that I've heard recently have I thought, wow, this is sick. Like I've never heard this before, and had to look up certain songs. Other times, I even know like certain mashups and stuff like do you know what I mean everything is just yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. playing that, all real, of the same fair. tunes I think it's, and it's become, mad because go on. sorry bro well as DJs we need to be different the problem is what everyone's doing is they're checking everyone else's Instagram story or everyone else's mix and they're hearing certain songs and they're thinking oh man I need to be playing that certain song yeah, and yeah. if it's like the biggest song of the time or one of the biggest records then I agree you do need to be playing it but at the same time add your own flavors in it like if there's a song that you think is an absolute monster even if it's not even if it's not the biggest record in the world even if you are the only person that knows it just fucking put it in your <laughs> sets man it just makes you a bit different doesn't it i think well, i think um a lot of people have got caught in the rap race of of it because obviously the whole weekly mix thing got popular and you know what i mean we've seen a handful of djs break through and and get huge off it so you see, a lot of people just they'll go down the same route and and just get caught in the rat race of just flinging out anything just to keep up with the demand of of, yeah. the, of the mixes. Do you know what I mean? And then the quality just doesn't end up being there, or these men are being lazy. Um, but for, I, I love it. I love throwing in like a left field track that nobody else is on because nine times out of ten, someone asks in the comments because they can't shazam yeah. it, they can't find it online. Like I always sprinkle two four Ks little unreleased bits into my mixes. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, little yeah. Ta little tactical ones. I'll just throw them in there, unreleased stuff. And nine times out of ten, someone writes in the comments, "What's the song at ten minutes fourteen seconds?" And it's normally uh -huh. the one that is unreleased and is not out there that the man can't find or they can't shazam it. Do you know what I mean? So because yeah, everything is, everything's so accessible now, so when man can't find a song on Shazam, like their head falls off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Trust that's me, oh, like, that's the thing, man. It's because it's because what they'll do is they'll search for it online. So they'll search in the record pools and then they'll look for their emails to see if they've been sent it. And when they can't find it, they don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. And suddenly they, and they then also feel like they're behind the curve because they don't know what this song is. That's right. That's it's real. mad, bro. That's real. It's that's mad, real. but it is, it is down to 
this laziness at the end of the day. That's what it is. It People comes down to the individual, to man. Like, the, it, if search. you really love this game and you're about it, like, you you find the new music, you man, you use all these record pools and all the other tools that are available, but still keep yourself like as an individual, have your own individual like sound. I use pure yeah. record pools. I've been with DJ like DJ City. I've been with them since they launched, like helping them with the podcast and like. I used to like submit music to them um, to go up, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. to go up on the site. So like I've been part of building, of building the platform. Um, but yeah, it's definitely gone down the, the route of it's just allowed bare, bare DJs to be lazy and just get. I mean, they sign up fifteen pound, five pound a month or whatever it is, and boom, they don't have to do no work. Then they just know they can jump on D, on on DJ City, Digiwax, late night record pool, whichever else on a Friday night, load up and they're good to go kind yeah. of thing do you know what I mean and kind of misses there's, out all the there's all definitely, the bits in between there's, def there's definitely pros and cons to, to record pools one thing I do like is like with the record pools DJ City in particular they do have like the the intro mixes and stuff which can come in handy oh, sometimes bro, but big ups. not not for <laughs> not for every single mix that's all I'm gonna say like if you're DJing <laughs> don't just DJ every single mix is an intro and outro mix but another thing is like acapellas occasionally but instrumentals as well do you know what I mean that's not always stuff especially the acapellas record pools when they have access to acapellas that's amazing yeah that's the sickest man you can't necessarily get the acapellas off iTunes or wherever else you might get the music that's not a record pool um, they post a lot so of DIYs as well man like they make they, they make a lot of stuff in house which I think is sick like, it, like yeah. they got Satori man because he's like he's like the intro king bro he like he does all of the intro edits or like 90 percent or more of the intro edits yeah, and, yeah, yeah. like the re drums and that so like satoru is the king when it comes to that shit so yeah man. and stuff like stuff like that is cool when they do the re drums or like the club edits for example um when they do when they do like the <clears throat> just the first one that pops the head sicko mode where it's the drake only version oh yeah part part two intro edit part three intro perfect edit. Trust. perfect for the club <laughs> just drop that in in the shellers and perfect. stuff like that stuff like that I think is fine if every DJ plays that because I think the first part of the record's a bit dead anyway um, I think one, th but, one, of, one of the pros as well um, is I think it's dope for the artists to be able to because a lot of artists submit their stuff directly through DJ City knowing that mm -hmm. they can get the output and get it directly into the hands of the DJ so one thing that DJ City did create was that database of literally any DJ. Yeah. Probably, like, they're all the way across the world now, but especially in the UK, like, they have got every DJ and any DJ that is about their game or, or doing anything, making any kind of noise, is on DJ City. So it's like, it allows the artists to get their stuff directly into everybody's hands, whereas before, do you know what I mean? Like, artists trying to get music to DJs, yeah, they'll, they'll get it to a few, but trying to get it to a national database like that, it was pretty much unheard of. Yeah, you've got the pluggers and stuff. Um, but even then, like, not everybody's on the pluggers' mail-outs. Like, it's tough, whereas... And not, not only that, it's, it's a lot of money to get a plugger to do a campaign. Yeah, exa ex well, it's exactly not, it's that. It's not free. It's not cheap. It's a lot of money, man. And the artists do get... like They get they, they receive their royalties and stuff, like, through DJ City too. So, like, they're, they're getting their contributions... I mean the DJ. Oh, what they do? The artists, the yeah. artists get paid. I, yeah. I think, I think they have some kind. Of, I'm sure there's there's something in place where they, where they have to contribute in some way because they're basically That's sick. making. Because if well, if they're making money off it, so I mean that people yeah. pay for the subscription and the artist music goes through there. There has, surely there has to be. I don't know what the gospel is, but you would think that there would be some kind of contribution in it. Otherwise, how how would they get away with charging? Um, yeah, I yeah. I always just assumed it was a. Uh, well, if you send us your music, we'll make sure all the DJs have it. And this is how many DJs we've got. Okay. So it would make sense. Surely there the would be a legality though, right? If you're charging for a service that is content that you don't own, in a sense. If you know what I'm I saying. don't know. It, it depends. Hmm. Cause I, Satoru, play any of you, man, if you watch this, jump in the comments, yeah? yeah? <laughs> Let us know. Is there <laughs> is there PRS for artists? If so, I'm going to start submitting tracks to DJ City. <laughs> Get me. So that's one thing that I think is dope. I think like like if if like I put out that iPhone song with two four early in the year, and literally boom straight through DJ City, and then within a week all the DJs have done like they're all on the Insta story, boom boom playing iPhone this that all that, and it's all come through there. So like that is yeah. 
it's a it's a it's a big look, man. It's a big look. But as for you, la- you lazy DJs, yeah. Sort tell it out. Him, tell him, bro. Do you know what I mean? Tell him, bro. Stop sort being, it out. Stop being lazy. Get me. And but do subscribe to the record pools because it's good for some stuff. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like subscribe to them, like they're good to have. It's part of the arsenal. Like you need to be. <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. You need to be signed up to these record pools. Like it's part of it. Like flipping neck, I've got five, bro. Like I'm getting sucked that's, out. Yeah, that's a bit mad. How much is that costing you? Every um, month? it's. I'm not even sure. They're, they're, they're all around the same price. They're all around the same Mad. price. So it's, yeah, it adds up. It adds up, man. Yeah. One thing that DJ City do do extremely well is they have a good community. Yes. Of DJs. Like this, the good thing is, especially with the link ups and stuff, this is another pro to, to the, the record pool. The DJ City link up that happens. And now they've got them. The, I, I think it's the first one happened in America. Now, obviously, it happens in England. I think it happened in Germany this year as well, and Cyprus. Oh, they've done loads, so man. Like, I'm sure they've done... They might have even done a an Italy one or something, man. I'm sure... I've, I've seen pure sick. stuff popping up for that. It's, they built the sickest that community. Is, yeah, that is the good thing, the community in a job where, basically, most people don't like the other people because it's all... Everyone sees themselves as competition <laughs> and that. Do you know what I mean? It's all a bit messed up. I think it's it's but, the first of its kind, especially in the UK as well. Like I think people have probably tried bits and bobs like that, but like going off the link ups that I've been to and then the way everyone's interconnected on social media to get everybody in the yeah. same room, everybody kinda knows of each other anyway through Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. So it like once everyone's together, it just becomes like a giant family in a sense. Like every yeah, I think all of the link ups have been have been sick. I never got to go to the last one, um, but like the previous ones even the first one, bro, was in a Nando's basement in central London. And, <laughs> I never went to it. And there was I like, you telling me about like it. 150 DJs, bro, just eating chicken. Just yeah. literally just chopping it up. And like Mr. Jam got up, said a few words and whatnot. And um, yeah, uh, Dr. Psycho was there, man. Like, bless his, bless his soul. Like, oh, I just, rest I, in peace, Psycho. I, just, I remember just Dr. Psycho was just the life of the party that day. It was so funny, legend. bro. Like, legend. What a legend. Um, but yeah, man, big up all the DJ City camp. Like what them, what them guys have built is next level, and to take it all the way across the country, across the states, Europe, like Italy, France, Germany. Mad. It's it's actually bonkers, you know. Like they're gonna keep going. They're gonna keep going. Hmm. Crazy. But at the same time, if you're using a record pool, get your lazy claw into some other get places your lazy online. <laughs> Find some new music and play it. Take risks. DJs don't take risks. That's the problem. Everyone's they're scared to take the risks, bro. So I, bro, that's why everyone's just everyone just sounds vanilla with the same sets. Everyone just sounds plain, ready. But salt. actually, you know what? You know ready what? Salted. I don't think I don't think the DJs are fully to blame because I see in some instances actually why it is difficult and why some DJs would be scared to take risks with music. Okay. And it's partly down to the crowd. Cause if you like these days, the crowd can be pretty dead, man. Like they Bro, that it's so, br- it's so brutal now. The Insta like, crowd, the Insta crowd, if they don't know, if they don't know a song, they will just stand still. Bro, it's like, brutal now, man. Literally it's like- brutal. Like you, you could be stood there DJing and like, you, you're questioning your own shit. You're like, yo, is this, yeah. is this me? Or are these guys uh-huh. really this dead? I can't yeah. fig- I can't figure it out. Like, yeah, you're totally right, man. I think the the attention span and the knowledge of half these ravers they're just not plugged, they're just not on it like that no more. Like, I remember when not you I was ranting on Instagram the other week about like the like the old classics and stuff, the nineties, the the hip hop that we grew up on. That I like, you know, anthems, bro. Like, the, yeah. they're irrelevant now. You play that shit to these new kids, and they're looking at you like. Is this, is this guy all right? Like, what's going on? When was, when was the last time you played MOP anti up? Oh, a long time ago, bro. Bro, <laughs> that I'm not going to be. Actually, like, to shoot. be fair, on a, I can get away with that at my Saturday spot because you can play like classic hip hop and whatnot. But as for the, oh. the younger crowds that I play to, my Fridays and in the week, nah. Not a chance. I can't mate. remember the last time <laughs> I played it. And I, that used to be my rhythm. And up, get that fool. Mad, so you're on, you're on in my head off, bro. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a tricky one. But I think like the thing is, the best advice to DJs would be like just 
add your own flavor to the sets. Don't just get it from one place. Don't just get your music from one source. Find lots of different ones. Find some new artists. Don't be afraid spend to add time. in the spice, man. You That's the thing. Spend spice, time listening to music. Like Spend time, learn how to discover new music. And not only that, when you find a banger or a song that you love, if it's a song that you love, that's how you add your flavor yep. to your club sets. Don't be afraid to shout about it, man. Like, exactly, exactly. Well, I'll be, po I'll post stuff in WhatsApp, yeah, and like the man, <laughs> like all the man are into this trappy stuff. I'm not fully, I'm not like completely on it, and they'll be like, oh, this is a banger, and I was like, nah, this is dead, and then I'll throw a shout in, and everyone will just bury me, but I'll just own my, <laughs> I'll just own my. You gotta own your selections, man. Own them 100%. selections, bro. Own them with confidence in it. If it's a banger. Make sure you yeah. you got to make sure you put it on. Shout you about lazy it. Lazy pricks. Anyway, well um, <laughs> well that we'll add the D lazy pricks. You know, I'm gonna put the DJ City um bits and bobs in the bottom in it. So if you guys want to subscribe to the to the site, if you've not like if you're not already subscribed to it, go check it out, man. But obviously DJ City's family, you get me. You get me. <laughs> it's the Talk Over podcast with DJ Double and DJ Stylus. Subscribe to the channel. The end. The end. <laughs>